That's a large mouth. That's a big large mouth. That's a big one. Not hooked very well. There's a good one right there. Look at that. Okay. It's been a trying day. Found a school right away today. Decided to go look around a bunch more and haven't found much until right now. Found a bunch of fish down there. There's been a, there were a bunch of white, uh, white bass down there. Saw a ton of fish on my hummingbird. Decided to fish for them. I said, if I catch one more white bass, we're out of here. And my next bite is like a three and a half pounder. Nice one, look at that. So we might be on to another vlog here. Looked around a bunch, finally got one. Now I'm hoping I want to get some more casts down there and see if there's a good school of them. Maybe they're all this size and bigger. I caught white bass out here kind of on the actual point where it rolls off into deeper water. But that one, the largemouth was way up on top and that's where I saw them on the actual side image. They were. I idled over it. I saw nothing on the 2D or the down, but out on the side, I could see a, a group of fish out there. They looked like they were a decent size, bigger ones. So current is, is a, the biggest key, I think, for catching fish on ledges. They bite better when there's a good, strong current. And when you're looking for a spot, you know, I always assumed that the fish would be on the, the tail side of the current in the eddy and sitting there where they don't have to swim and they're waiting for the bait to go by. The fish really like the, the head of the current. They like the front edge of a ledge, you know, a, a hump, a point. They like the side where the current hits and bulges on. They don't like the back side, they like the front side. And what I think happens is that, you know, the uh, shell beds or hard bottom is is another key they like to get on. Well, the current, when it comes down the lake, it brushes all the soft silt away from the leading edge and it deposits it on the tail edge. So you get the hard bottom on the front edge of these, these bars, and that's where the schools of fish like to get. I think we're gonna probably leave and go look for another spot. You know, I'm trying to find a good school where I can catch multiple fish. There's no reason for me to keep beating up on a spot where I might have only caught the the, the one largemouth down there. And there's white bass. There's another largemouth right there. I was just about to leave and I catch another largemouth. So I thought I was decoyed, but I mean, I've made a lot of casts here and then catch another largemouth. I could have sworn it was a white bass again. So maybe I'll make a couple more casts, but I could have sworn that I caught the one largemouth that was down there, but obviously there's more than just that one down there. Dude, that felt like one hit it right there. There, he's got it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yep, that's a good one there. I knew that was a good school of them down there. I knew that was a good school of them. That's a good one too. They're getting bigger, fellas. Don't you jump, don't you jump. That's a good one there. <laughs> now that is a Gunnersville ledge fish right there. <laughs> so, all right, we're figuring things out a little better now. I found a good school of them down there. Not a giant school, but I could tell they were clustered in one good little spot. I threw the 2.5 down there and didn't catch one. 
because I couldn't get deep enough. I threw the, the, the 2.5 XD and smoked it on the first cast. I threw the XD because the school is a little bit deeper. So we're gonna get a good, good little cast in there again. I'm, I'm guessing we can catch a couple more now. I knew he was gonna find it. That's a good one too, another big one. Oh, I had a double, I had a double. No way, I had a double and he came off right when they came up. That's what I love about ledge fishing like this. I had two on and right when it got up to the top, I lost the second one. I had a legit double on right there. I wanna hurry up and get down there because they are fired up. Because that's the second cast I've made with the deeper plug on this spot. Caught a four pounder on the first cast. I had a double on the second cast. Let's get right back out there again and see if I can land that double. There he is, right there, go, another one. Oh, he's a little guy, I thought it was a big one. What are you doing? All right, let's get back out there. I wanna get a double. Let's work on that double. Three fish and three casts. Actually, it's four fish and three casts, but lost one. Let me get another one right here. You guys ready? Any second, we're right in the zone, right? Right there. Oh, he missed it. He had, there, I got it that time. Missed it the first time, caught him the second time. So fun when they're biting this quick. You have to take advantage of them biting. You know, keep casting, keep that bait down there because the more you get them running around and chasing bait, the more you can catch. You keep them excited, you keep them in that flurry. It's like a feeding frenzy. Once you get them going, you have to make the most of it because before too long, they'll just stop. I'm right in the zone right there. One's gonna bite any second. There, he's got it. Uh-oh, 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 fellas. Oh, man, I could have sworn he was a big one. I wonder if I had another double because the thing didn't move. It felt like one of those big six, eight pounders. Look at it, they're still biting. There's nothing more satisfying than you know looking at your lake master map and you put in the time you can't just roll right to the exact spot you know we've hit a lot of areas before we found you know a couple groups of fish but the lake master chip that's on there it helps you eliminate a lot of water and being able to see them on you know sonar and down image it, it helps you to you know eliminate a lot of water and get to the you know the, the schools faster and now they've kind of shied off a little bit so what i'll do is i'll pick up that worm in just a second but one thing that that i am doing that's a key is that if you can't hit that bottom you, you, you have to have a deeper running crankbait to do it or like this with the tatula 100 and an eight foot cranking rod uh, the Tattoo Elite Series cranking rod, it's an eight footer. I can cast that thing so far, and, and that is key for getting that bait down there deeper. You have to be on the bottom, and not only get it down deeper, but you keep it in the strike zone for longer. So way out there at the end of my cast, I'm able to hit bottom instead of just touching it and then coming up. It just touches and comes up, you're not getting the full potential out of that cast. So you need to be on the bottom longer. But what's great about this spot too, is that I pulled up. When I caught that first fish, I just put the troll motor in spot lock. We never moved. I'm, this is the first time I've touched the troll motor since I got on this spot. The spot lock will hold you right there. You know, when there's current like this, there's one, I got him. I don't know how big he is.
I got a little bit different angle. And I picked up another fish. What I'm gonna do is get right here and I'll put it in spot lock again. Because I started to see fish under the boat. When I saw fish under the boat, that means that I'm pulling that school towards me. You know, every fish you catch, you kind of keep pulling them closer to you. So I wanted to move away from it a little bit. Now I've got a little bit different angle. I got that fish to bite there. Let's see if I can pick up another one here quick. If nothing happens, I'm gonna pick up that worm and I'll be able to catch another one or two on a, on a worm. Another thing to try is adjusting the retrieve. That one, I've, I've started walking a little bit, meaning that, you know, fishing the bait with the reel, stopping, starting, just to change things up. You know, that bait's been going through there a bunch. Oh, that's what they're gonna, look, look at those fish. Those fish are coming up to look at the hydro wave. I just turned on the hydro wave. And those, that whole group right there, that was, I was going on the troll mode. That whole group came up off the bottom to look at the hydro wave. They heard the noise. They wanted to see what it was. I just got it right there, 100%. Are you kidding me? I let him have it for a long time too. Let's see if he came back. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it again. <laughs> Little guy, that's why. He threw my dinko off. Why you lose them? They're little. That was on the worm. Now, one thing, real quick. This hook right here, if you're gonna throw a wacky rig or a Nako rig, this is a brand new hook by Gamagatsu that I helped design. It's called the Weedless Stinger Hook. That is the best wacky rig hook you could ever throw, period. We make it in a weedless, which has these two titanium weed guards on it, or just straight without any of that on there. But it's the best wacky rig hook you can throw. If you hook them, you land them, period. Uh, I've missed a couple here, but they didn't have the bait. The bait was torn a little bit. It means they're eating half the bait. If this thing goes in their mouth, you land them. It's that good of a hook. bad now one thing that we have not talked about yet is a brand new Tatula 100 uh, this is coming out at iCast uh, this coming July I don't know all the specs about it yet because it's brand new um, I want to say it has more bearings in it uh, it's different knobs than the standard Tatula 100 90 millimeter handle uh, all I know is that it's really smooth really smooth and uh, we're gonna make several different models. There's gonna be the standard model and there's gonna be the FP, which is a flip and pitch model. Uh, the flip and pitch model is gonna have a really ultra shallow spool. Uh, and, and I think that's the other thing. This spool is in between an SP spool and the Tatula 100 spool. So it's just slightly shallower, which means you're gonna have you know, less weight in that spool. That to me means fewer backlashes, you don't have that centrifugal force that's forcing that, that line uh, off of that reel. You know, a heavier spool is gonna give you more backlashes. Uh, the other thing it's gonna do is cast baits farther. You know, it's, it's gonna be smoother, but it's gonna cast baits farther because the spool is a little bit lighter. Uh, but in hand, very smooth, like, like all the Tatula models. Uh, every year they come out with a new model, and I say it's my new favorite reel. The Tatula 100, uh, came out and it was my favorite reel and now they came out with this one which is called the Tatula Elite which again from what I've you know what I can tell I've only used it a few times it's gonna be my favorite Tatula my favorite dial of reel uh, of all time so every year I keep saying that they keep coming out with newer and better stuff and right now it's the Tatula Elite Got the school fired up. 
Not a big one, but I got them fired up. You know, I threw the, the 3.5 XD and it might have been too deep of a diver here. I don't know, for some reason they didn't want it. I just decided to pick up the, the 3.5 DD, which is a silent bait. And now I've had, there's another one right there. So they, they like that I've switched baits. They're not big ones. Now it's a white bass there. But they like the fact that I've switched to this. Now it could be color. I went to a chartreuse in blue. But they definitely like this bait. So, you know, that's a good, a good tip for fishing ledges is that I always run through the gamut of the baits. You know, the two different crankbaits, you know, have a worm. There's another one right there. That feels like a, I don't know what he is. Either a foul hook white bass or I got a good large mount. It's a good large mount. Good large mount. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. That's a nice one. Look at that one right there. Oh man. Look at that one. That's one thing you definitely have to do. I changed that hook out to a Gami short shank EWG. You will land fish like that that only have one hook in them. So, change baits. They're biting at every cast. That's a nice one right there. You know, that's another four pounder. We've run a lot of spots. We've caught a couple four pounders now. And rotation, bait rotation as well. Rotate through the spots. It's been a pretty fun day. We've caught a lot of fish today. What a fun day right there. So be sure to like, share, and tag a friend, and stick around for more vlogs next week on Lake Gunnersville.